do you believe that God will make a way? Can you see the potential in what could be and are no longer willing to accept what is? So many of us need God to break through in various areas of our lives. The key is found in faith and action. Maybe God is calling us to a better way. Maybe now is the time for your breakthrough. So the world has been captivated the last, I don't know, several, several months with those wildfires that were raging in Australia. And, uh, and it's interesting because wildfires can spread extremely fast. And so I want you to imagine, you, you parachute drop as a firefighter into those wildfires. And, uh, and, and, the, and the fire is burning and the winds are blowing. It's out of control. And you have a wall of fire that is coming towards you. They say that wildfires, when the wind's blowing very strong, it can move at a rate of, uh, of, of 11 feet a second, all right? It's just, just raging. You have a wall of fire coming towards you. You have three options of what you're going to do, all right? Here's, here's the options that you have. Do you, if that wall of fire is coming towards you, do you drop your tools and run for your life, all right? Do you stand your ground and use your tools to clear a safe area? Do you hold on to your tools and move as fast as you can to the nearest safe area? area. Which one would you choose? Which one of these appeals to you most as the fire is raging out of control and spreading at an incredible pace towards you? How how do you respond? Well, experienced firefighters chose option C in two different scenarios. In 1949 at Man Gulch, Montana, and in 1994, in South Canyon, Colorado. And because of the choice, it was deadly results. And all 27 firefighters died within safe site areas. They could see the the safety ahead of them, but they couldn't make it there. They were overrun by the fast-moving fires. So why did, why, why did the firefighters hold on to their tools in option C? Why, why did they do that? And what can we learn from their experience? See, learning to drop your tools, the very things that are meant to help protect us against the fires and the raging inferno that is coming towards us, those are the things that are meant to fight it and to protect us. But you drop them to gain lightness to gain agility, to gain wisdom. And those things tend to be forgotten in the heat of the moment, especially when they are old habits that we carry with us. Having the right tools in your toolbox, personally and in the church family, it it is a good thing to have the the right tools. It, It dramatically increases our chance of success. However, relying on the same tools over and over for long periods of time can sometimes come at a high cost. As we see, the amount of churches across our country, as waves of change happen, Doors close forever. Churches are gone. They close the door and they close. The fires rage out of control, consuming anything in their path. As the old saying goes, if all that you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. Tools that we use repeatedly become deeply entrenched. They're they're habits that we think there's just a one-size-fits-all and we stick to what we've always known and we just, we try to do the same thing over and over, but but it's, it's not working. It's not working many times in our nation. It's not working many times in our lives. And there might be a point in time where we need to drop what we thought we knew. These habits, these things that we relied on so fast and for so long, and run. Let's revisit the wildfires in Man Gulch in South Canyon. The, the firefighters were slowed down because they failed to drop their heavy tools. The firefighters were slowed down because they wouldn't let go. In fact, some victims were found still clutching their chainsaws. 
Firefighters are trained to look for their tools and to carry their tools and to, to, to hang on to their tools, especially experienced firefighters. They develop that as one of their habits. It's, it's a good thing for them to do. And most of the time, that habit serves them well. Dropping their tools means changing a strongly ingrained habit in their lives. But sometimes that's exactly what's needed. See, in a series that we're calling Breakthrough, we're going to be praying, and I have been praying that we would see a spiritual breakthrough. I really believe that God is calling us as a church family into something. I, I believe that we are on the verge of, of breakthrough, not only just in our lives, but, but also as a family in what he wants to do in and through our church in the region around us. We're praying that we encounter the, the winds the winds of change, and then instead of that fire blowing towards us at an incredible rate, destroying everything in its past, that, that, the, that the wind of the Spirit would change and, and move around and we could fan into flames that spark of the Spirit within us to press forward and to do what He wants us to do. I think God has a freshly spoken word for us this morning. I think he wants to share specifically with each of us individually a rema. A rema really is the, 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 the word of God, a freshly spoken word. And we were supposed to start a different series today. That was the plan. We had planned that long ago, almost a year ago, to start a, a new series today. And God was stirring in my heart and and, and, and I really felt like God wants to do something just on the verge of breakthrough, spiritual breakthrough here. And so, and so we, we just decided to be obedient and then listen to what he wanted to do and, and moving in this direction and understanding maybe more of what he has for us. And I believe that, that God wants to do something really big in the ministry of Southgate. A next level kind of thing. And so I feel like we needed a fresh word for the season and, and maybe to let go of some things in the past and embrace some things that he's calling us into. And let me just say this. I just, I, I, you, you, you might not know me very well, and, and maybe I don't even know you very well, but, but I, you need to understand, like, I have a deep love for you and our family here at Southgate. And, uh, and, and, and this teaching today, it comes from that deep love of, of you and, and what I believe that God wants for you. And so here's what I believe. I believe that God wants more for you and maybe the thing that he wants for, for you is on the other side of breakthrough. It, it breakthrough is a real difficult thing to, to, to push into and move over to the other side of. But I think that's what God, that's what God wants for you and for us as a church and, and I think sometimes the, 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 in the path of life, I mean, what he has for us, sometimes we dilly-dally, sometimes we, we take the wrong turn or, or we do something or we head in a direction that maybe it wasn't really, we weren't really planning to go in. But, uh, but here's what God kind of revealed to me this, this, this week. He, he, wanted, he wanted to talk to me about my wrath. He wanted to talk to me about my wrath, all right? Not the other word. He wanted to talk to me about my RAS. You know what a RAS is? A RAS is your reticular activation system. It's, it's back here, and basically what it means is it's kind of like uh, when I bought my white car. I have a white car, and when I bought that car, um, I was like, whoa, this is, no one, no, I, I don't see a lot of people driving this car, but, uh, but then when, you, when I bought the car and I was driving around, I'm like, everyone has this car. I can see this car everywhere, right? It's the reticular activation system, and it's when you, you get that activated, you begin to see it everywhere, and I saw that car everywhere, and here's the deal. I think the thing that God is calling us more into, the, on the other side of breakthrough, you really have to, he needs to activate your, your wrath, that you would see him in everything that you do, that you would see him moving in places and creating and, 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 and forgiving and loving. You need to see that all through your vision. And the more that you step into that, the more he activates you and calls you into what he has for you. And so today we're going to start this series off in, um, in the book of Ezekiel. 
Normally, I'd be talking uh, about chapter 47, but today we're going to look at chapter 37, all right? And so you can turn with me to that, uh, that particular uh, that chapter here. And as you turn there, um, I, I, want you to, uh, I want you to think about this card. There, there's one of these in every seat back, and, and I want you to take this out because here's what I'm going to ask you to do at the end of the teaching. I, I want you to hold this in your hand as, as I'm teaching here, and I want you to think about what is God calling you into? What, what is he calling you to do? What is that thing on the other side of breakthrough that maybe he's, he's told you to do that you need to step into. And at the end of the service, I want you to write that down. All right. So you can take these blue cards and you can hold them. You get ready to do that at the end of the teaching. All right. The things that he's calling you into. And so Ezekiel, Ezekiel is essentially a priest at the time, and, um, and he, is, he, is, he, is in, um, he is in what is known now as Baghdad, Iraq. This is, this is Babylon at the time, and, and, uh, and, and he's sitting one day praying, and immediately he goes into a trance. And he has some type of a vision that God has given him in that moment. And uh, it's an incredible thing that he's seeing. He, the presence of God is on him. And he sees the presence of God coming on a chariot. And, and, and he begins to have this visualization of, of, of something that God is calling him to do. And God essentially is telling him that I need you to go and tell my people to come back to me because they've turned from me. Um, the thing is, is that when you tell them, they won't believe you. And, and that's a hard thing. I mean, God is telling Ezekiel to do something, but he's essentially saying, I'm asking you to do something that's not going to work. They're, they're not going to believe you, right? And, uh, and how many of you have been called to do something great? And you have a fear, and because of that, you don't do it. It's the fear of the unknown. It's the fear of failure. It's the, it's the fear of, of, of not knowing what's going to happen, Right? And God calls you to do something, but you just you don't step into it, and you haven't done it. And maybe, maybe, maybe that's why you've burned out. Maybe that's why you know you come to church, but you don't really serve in the church. Maybe it's be, it's, it's it's that you come and, and you read your Bible or you, you you believe in God, but you're not really living it out in your life. And so today we're going to read through what, what is described as the valley of dry bones in Ezekiel 37 and see, uh, see the truth that we can pull out of this, all right? So let's turn there. Let's read this. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. And so today I just want to pull some truth from this, this passage here in Ezekiel 37. See what we can gain from it as it relates to breakthrough and moving into what God is calling us into. And I think to get there, you really have to start at the basics. I mean, the very, very basics of our understanding. And so let, let's check out this first point here. To get to breakthrough and to push past through breakthrough, I think it really begins with obeying Jesus reveals the true purpose of your life. It's about obedience and obeying what Jesus is asking you to do. And, and I think that he is, like if you got that card, what, what is the thing that he's asked you to do? Because I, I believe that he's asked all of us, all of us to do something, right? Some of you come every single Sunday and you are looking for more. You have a fire in your belly and, and you want more. You, you, you want to do something. You want breakthrough, but it starts with obedience. It, it's the simplest of things. It's the simplest of truths. It, it's obedience. It's seeing more blessings in your life. It, it starts with obeying what God has asked you to do. And, and that's super simple, right? Right? And, and, and that's how Ezekiel needed to respond to God when God's like, they're not going to listen to you. And I'm sure Ezekiel could have said, no, I don't want to do this. If they're not going to listen to me, what's the point? Why would I go ahead and do that? And yet, he's just, he's just obedient. 
And he follows through, and he does what God asked him to do. Listen, we are in this church here today because someone listened to what God asked them to do, right? They, they, they heard God you know, do that, plant this church, start this church, and then they did it, and now we are all here because of their obedience, right? It starts with that. There was a powerful evangelist who lived uh, in 1859 and 1947, his name was Smith Rigglesworth, and uh, God was doing amazing things through his ministry, and people, were, miracles were taking place, and, and people were being healed, and I mean, all kinds of incredible people coming to Jesus, and uh, one time a reporter asked, you know, what, what is the secret to your success? I mean, how, how is this all happening through your ministry? And here's what his response was. At the slightest whisper of the Holy Spirit, I turn aside and I obey. At the slightest whispering of the Spirit. Listen, everyone who hears my voice right now, the Spirit is whispering something to you. And it might be like, forgive your father for what he did to you. It might be, pick up the phone and call your mom. It might be, Go and have a conversation with that person that you're ending the relationship with. Spend time with your kids. Step into ministry at the church. Give towards this particular charity or towards my kingdom work. The Spirit is whispering something to you today. And there's something that you need to engage with and you need to just be obedient with. Because it unlocks the purpose of of the life that God has for you. See, I, I, I really had to, I, I've, I could talk several scenarios in my life where I had to do this. I had to choose when I was a teen if I was going to listen to God's call on my life to be a pastor. I didn't, I, I didn't necessarily want to be a pastor, but God told me to go do that, and so, and so I did, Right? Or or, or listening to what he was leading me to do when we moved to New York or even when we came back here and turning in our our, our permanent residency cards in in the United States and coming here or or, or starting and listening to what God said to us about Ezekiel 47 or or starting the Winchester campus or going into a building project or or the things with with the rink. I mean, it's, it's listening to God and obeying what he's calling you to do leads to unlocking God's purpose for your life. See, just like Ezekiel, um, Tom was told to do something. He, he was led to do something. He was, he was told by God, and he took, he took a step in radical faith, in radical obedience to unlock God's purpose for his life. Don't, don't, don't underestimate this. You, you might not understand what God, what God, how it's all going to work, but you really need to be obedient to it. Which leads me to point number two here. God created and commissioned you to release life to people in your circles. Do you realize that you are a pastor? You, you understand that? You are a pastor. God, God, is, God has given you, he's, he's created and commissioned you for ministry to release, to release this life to people in your circles, your family members, your friends, your coworkers, your, your, I mean, all these people who, who are in your circle of influence, you are commissioned to release life in them, right? The Hebrew word for breath is ruach, all right? It's ruach. When Ezekiel is there in front of those dry bones, God said his breath would enter them. You remember another time where God's breath entered someone? Yeah, Adam, right? His, his breath entered Adam, and, uh, and, and, and Adam came alive. He, he breathed words in the creation story, and things began to come alive. He, 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 he's doing this, and it's an amazing thing that he, he wants to do, and that he did in the valley of dry bones, these bones coming back to life. And you might be walking around with, with, with a heart that feels dry, like a valley of dry bones, and God wants to breathe into you this morning. He wants to breathe life into you. He wants to do something that doesn't make sense, that is absolutely powerful. And he not only wants to do that in your life, but he wants you to do that in other people's life. 
Check out this passage from Ephesians 4, 29. It says this, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. This is, this, is, this is like a Holy Spirit punch in the mouth. Like this is, this is, this is important stuff. See, God, God wants to breathe life into you, but he's asking you to do the same for other people. Your words should be like, like, like nitroglycerin. You know what nitroglycerin does? It blows things up, right? Like, like a bridge, if you're, if you're demolishing a bridge or you're taking down a building, you would use nitroglycerin. You, you know what else it's used for? In heart surgery, to, to heal and to fix hearts. And it's the same thing with our, our words should be like nitroglycerin. You know, you, you are either blowing things up by what you say, how you complain, how you, how you, you know, pull life away from people, right? Or, or you're using your words to heal. You are commissioned to use those words to speak life into people. And people, we, we know people like this. We love people like this who speak life into us. And you are one of the two, right? Y- y- you are. Be that person. There are people who build others up wherever they go. And then there are other people who build, build you up w- whenever they go. Whenever they leave the room, it's like, finally, right? And so who, who are you? How do your words build others up? And how do you release, how do you, how, do you, how do you spur that on in other people, right? Speak life into valley of dry bones. You're releasing something. Are you releasing life? Are you releasing death? Well, Jesus, the point number three. To lead to breakthrough, God has created your life not to be ordinary, but to reflect his extraordinary. To reflect his extraordinary, right? Philippians 1.6, it says this, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So it's not maybe, it's, 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 not, it's not possibly, he, he will do this. He, he will do this. In fact, C.S. Lewis uh, was quoted to once say this, I believe in Christianity as I believe the sun has risen, not only because I see it, but because by it, I see everything else. See, when you have the love of God in your life, people can, people can see it in you. They should be able to see it all around you by how you reflect God to, 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 to those around you, right? How you speak life into them and how you interact with society. They see the fruit of it. They see stuff around you. They see the sun in you. And the sun gives light. And when you open your mouth, rivers of life should flow out of it, right? Which leads us to our final point here. Breakthrough. Understanding this, that God entrusted you to engage all of his will for your life. Engage all of his will for your life. In fact, Galatians 5.13 says this, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. You might say, yeah, I, I get it. I know I'm called, I'm called to break through for spiritual breakthrough. I, I, I want that. I understand that. I, I get it, but I don't know what God's will is for my life. You want to know what God's will is for your life? Come back next week and I'll tell you. I'm just joking. God's will, God's will for your life is that you would be a reflection of him on earth as he is in heaven. That you would be that reflection here on earth while you're here. And some of you here today, you, you are entrusted with so very much. Some of you business people, I mean, you, you are entrusted with hundreds, if not millions, hundreds of thousands or, or millions of dollars. You're, you're entrusted with this. And, and you may be coming from a place where you used to be broke. And God has provided and done that in your life. And he's saying, how are you going to honor me with that? I'm calling you to do something. What are you going to do? Or some of you, you are so gifted at teaching and loving kids and he's entrusted you with that ability and he's asking you, what are you going to do with that? And some of you, 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 you are just so, super organized and you're type A and, 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 and you just love to organize or to clean or to, to do these kind of things. Or some of you have gift of hospitality and you just love hosting other people. And, and some of you, you, you just speak, you have great teaching skills or, or your incredible voice or, or I don't know what it is, but God has entrusted you with something. What is the something? And then how are you leveraging for the kingdom of God? 
Use it for his glory. Use it for his good. Use the things that he's entrusted with to honor him. See, in Ezekiel 37, you see, Ezekiel get this vision of the breath of God going into a valley of dry bones. Now, fast forward. Fast forward to chapter 47. 47 is, if you've ever been to Southgate Unite class, you, you, you've heard about Ezekiel 47. We've talked about it, the river of life kind of flowing, and it's our path of discipleship. It's our process here at Southgate. It's pretty amazing, though. Ten chapters later, Beginning you had 37, you had a valley of dry bones, right? Dry, dry bones. No life at all. And then in chapter 47, you see, you see an image of a temple and water flowing out of the temple through the valleys, getting deeper and wider, affecting change, doing incredible things, miracles. See, this, this is prophetic. You understand that? This is prophetic, it's, it's prophetic in, in what, what happens in, even in the Garden of Eden. It happens, in, it's prophetic about what, what happens through Jesus and his ministry. It's prophetic in, in, in really how, how we respond to that as a church and what God wants to do through our church. But listen, it's also prophetic in your life. You realize you are God's temple. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. And there is a spark within you. To spark within you. And, and my heart, as your pastor and as a church, we, we want to fan into flames the spark in you that you would lead to spiritual breakthrough. And we would, instead of being engulfed and destroyed by the flames, that we would fan in the flame of the Spirit in you and do something great for His glory. Let's pray. Father, we. Uh, we long for breakthrough. It's our desire that uh, you would be glorified through our actions and through our ministry. But Father, some of us, we need to release maybe some things that we've been holding on to for so long. And all of us need to embrace new things that you're leading us to do. Father, we, 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 it's uncertain all the things that the future holds, but Father, we want to press into uh, whatever those are in obedience. Wh whatever you want to do in and through us, God, we want, to, we want to accept that calling on our lives. And so speak, whisper to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're watching online, uh, we have some next steps that we kind of wrote down for you, some practical steps that you can, you can apply to your life uh, from this teaching that we heard here today. And so here they are. The first is, is, is ask, is, is my heart a valley of dry bones? I'm, has my spiritual walk felt dry lately? Is it, is, is it, is it feel like the, 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 the living waters have all kind of dried up and I just, I'm not just, I'm just not feeling it anymore? Would you, would you take a step to allow God to breathe life into you? The Ruah, right? Allow him to just breathe life into, into you like he did with Adam, like he, like he did with, with, uh, with, with in this image of, of these dry bones in Ezekiel, right? Number two, what is the Holy Spirit asking you to do? There, there's something that he has called you to do. There's something that he wants you to do. What is the thing that he's whispering to you that maybe you haven't stepped out to do, but that he really wants you to do that unlocks kind of that purpose for why you were made? And, and, and the purpose for your life. And then finally, number three, are you willing to drop your tools, what you become comfortable with, for the sake of spiritual breakthrough? That's my prayer for you.